first, as a scientist, really sort out what do we know and what don't we know? Because there's a lot of speculation, a lot of anecdotes circulating right now. Mm, thank you. Uh, happy to be here. Look, Omicron definitely has the characteristics to create us concern for many reasons. But uh, also, we have been preparing for a moment like that for months right now. And uh, I feel comfortable that the playbook will work. So what is the playbook? One, it is to understand more about this virus. The second, of course, will be to protect against infections. And the third is to treat. Let's take it one after the other to understand. I think there are a few things that uh, are not very clear yet with Omicron. One, it is the clinical manifestation of this new variant. Is it creating more severe disease or not? Is it transmitted easier or not? Is it going to younger or older people? All of these are things that, uh, as we see clinical cases coming out and the numbers are getting bigger, that's something that we will know in a few weeks. The second is, does this uh, virus, has this variant, has the ability to escape the protection of uh, our vaccine? I think that uh, that's something that we will know in a couple of weeks. And uh, I don't expect in any scenario to be that we don't protect at all. Actually, that's extremely, extremely unlikely. I think it could be anything from the protection remains very high to the protection is reduced. It's not 95, it is 70%, for example. And the third is that we need to know, it is if this virus can escape the uh, antiviral effect of the treatments that we have. We have antibodies, we have the injectables, and now we have a, an oral pill. Again, the expectations on that, it is that uh, for the oral pill, which is our pill, uh, I don't expect that the virus will escape uh, the, the antiviral effectiveness. Uh, the pill, the molecule was designed with that in mind. It was designed to be able to maintain efficacy while the variant, like the vi while the variant, the variant, the virus mutates. And uh, this, uh, is why we chosen a mechanism that doesn't depend on the spike and mutations on the spike, but uh, is uh, attacking something that the virus needs to replicate. It's called protease. We are inhibiting a protease which has nothing to do with the spike. And by the way, this protease, the virus needs it. It's very vital. So it's very difficult for the virus to develop a variant that while you that doesn't need the protease that we are inhibiting. So with all of that in mind, I think our pill will work very, very, very well. So we are waiting to see if the virus escapes the protection of our vaccine after a booster dose, which will be very difficult, I think, but we need to check it. Uh, we have already last Friday started the process of developing a tailor-made vaccine that not only we have very high level of confidence that we will have it ready within 100 days. But we have very high level of confidence that we can manufacture it uh, by billions if needed. So, Doctor, let's take that apart if we could. First of all, on the clinical front, I, as I understood what you said, it will be a few weeks before we really know how contagious this variant is and how virulent it is. Is that right? I mean, are we talking a month? Are we talking six weeks? What would be your get best guess? I think the more data we accumulate, the more accurate the, pro the prediction would be. But I think within a month, at large, we'll have a lot of information uh, if this is uh, more virulent or if it uh, replicates faster or if it can overtake Delta, etc. And, and Dr. Borla, then when you talked about the virus escaping, and as I understand what you said, it won't escape, you don't think, entirely. But the question is, how much of it can escape? What is the percentage? If you are 90 or 95 percent effect effectiveness with the original virus, uh, how soon will we know? Two weeks we will know how much will escape this virus? I think in two weeks we will have a good idea yeah. about that, two to three weeks. Do, do you because have... what we are going to do it is we are going to test this virus, if it is neutralized by serum of blood, of, by blood of people that have been vaccinated with two doses or have been vaccinated with three doses, and even people that have been vaccinated with uh, Delta or beta-related vaccines, after, of course, only experimentally we did that. Because, as I'm sure you know, David, we have already done two vaccines 
other than the one that circulates. We never use them because we don't need them. But we have a Delta and we have a Beta vaccines tailor-made for these variants. As we are now going to have one for Omicron, we never used them because we didn't need them. The current vaccine is very highly efficacious against those two. So, so is it possible that the variant, the, the, the dosage that you created for the Delta or the Beta might be more effective against the, this new variant? I, I, I doubt, but we will check it. Yeah. And uh, also, you spoke about the doses. Um, the good thing is that we got the dose, the dose right. The 30 from the from the from the get-go, the 30 microgram was the first and second dose. Didn't create a reactogenicity, so it was very well tolerated. So we could use the same dose, the 30, for the we didn't go to half dose, and uh, or the, on the third dose, the booster. That's a very important thing because now the third dose creates very high antibody responses. That gives me confidence that even for Omicron should be effective. But in case it doesn't, yes, we are going to have an Omicron vaccine. So give me a sense, and I know this isn't written in stone, but if either the current vaccine is 90 to 95 percent effective mm -hmm. against the COVID virus that we all became familiar with, at what point, as the effect effectiveness declines of the vaccine against the new variant, do you conclude you need a new, a new version? I mean, is it 75 percent? Is it 70? Is it 50 percent? At what point do you say, you know what, we need a new version? I think that's something that uh, likely we'll have to assess in conjunction with other information and other data holistically. But um, I believe that uh, just uh, going below 70, I think for us, will be uh, a trigger to start thinking that maybe we can switch the vaccine. We heard earlier this hour from President Biden saying he's already talking with you about what would happen if we got to that stage. He said, I don't think we're there yet, but he's already talking with you about the possibility of expediting production. Assume that happened, how quickly could you ramp up production of a new version of the vaccine? It, it is true that I spoke with the president, and uh, he was very kind to mention it. Uh, I, we can right now have within 100 days 95 to be accurate, our ability to submit a dossier and ask for approval from regulators. It's up to them how long it will take to give us an approval, but they have already indicated that they are expecting to have uh, streamlined processes for something like that. They consider it the same vaccine. Uh, manufacturing, this is the good news. We have right now reached a level that we are manufacturing. This quarter will make 1 billion doses. This quarter, 1 billion doses. So we are easily on a yearly production of 4 billion doses. I don't think that we will lose material volume if we have to switch to a new uh, vaccine. I think we could uh, basically overnight start switching our manufacturing lines from one to another. There will be a little bit of transition, let's say a few weeks, and also to, to manage, let's say, some of the inventories. But likely we will be able to have very fast, very strong production of vaccine if needed. I think what is needed right now is people to get to be current with a third booster. And of course, the other thing that we discussed was the treatment. And uh, we already announced uh, today that, uh, or I, I made it clear uh, on TV today that and I'm telling you that we are going to make 80 million doses treatment. We feel confident that uh, we can reach that capacity for next, for 2022, compared to 50 that I had announced a few few weeks back. So significant improvement on manufacturing capacity. So, so I want to come back to the vaccine, but let's stay on that subject of the antiviral treatment, the pills that you have here. Uh, are you confident that those will work against this new variant? Do you need to do further research to make sure that's right? We will do further research to ensure that this is right. But I'm very, very confident that this will work. Uh, let's talk for a moment about South Africa and Southern Africa, for that matter. I actually looked it up today, and I think that the vaccination rate for South Africa is something like 43 percent, something around that level, not a very high level. What is the problem with getting vaccinations in, into South Africa? You know, in the beginning, I mean, uh, six months ago, was a problem that there were not enough vaccines to reach uh, the African continent. Um, that, at large, has been restored now. So just to give you an idea, from uh, the eight African countries that have been placed in a travel ban from uh, the U.S. government, already five of these countries, but those five represent 95% of the population, right, of the state. So basically everyone in this list 
have asked us, their governments, to stop sending vaccines anymore because they have more than they can absorb. Now, why is that? I think it's a combination of multiple reasons. Uh, one is infrastructure, uh, vaccination centers, uh, specialized people. Uh, some has to do with a little bit of the ultra-cold chain, less of an issue. And then there is a lot of, uh, of uh, vaccine hesitancy also in those places. So for all these reasons, it's more logistical and infrastructure. Right now, I asked our people, for example, we were focusing how to make sure that they have enough doses. Right now, we are, fo- we are uh, I'm sorry, it is my dog. No, no, we like your dog. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, but we are uh, doing most of our work with these countries to ensure that we can help them with uh, NGOs there to absorb the vaccines, actually, to build infrastructure. And I think WHO has a very big role to play on that as well. To come back just a moment on the manufacturing of a new ver- version of the vaccine, if, in fact, you get to that point, uh, we're all concerned about supply chains these days. I understand you have the manufacturing capability. Is there any question of the ingredients you would need to put into the new vaccine? No, I think it's pretty much the same. What is uh, different in a new vaccine, it is that you are programming your RNA in a different sequence. It is exactly the same material, just they will have different sequence in the way that they appear in the molecule. So with all of that in mind, I feel very confident that if we have to switch, we are not going to see any material uh, loss of capacity because of that. And Dr. Borley, finally, uh, we have a question actually from a viewer right now that I think bears answering. He, he says, as we talk about all these variants, how much is the same among the viruses and how much is different? Oh, the vast majority is the same. But those small differences, uh, they create uh, they, they create uh, an issue, possibly. But if you see it in the, in the overall sequence, it's a very small part, but it is very different. But uh, the, the vaccine was highly, highly specialized. So it was taken into consideration every single, let's say, letter of the RNA. Um, uh, in the RNA alphabet. And uh, that's why the concern. But uh, as I said, still, the immune responses that we're getting with the third full dose uh, booster, it's so high that uh, will be... I'm optimistic that likely we'll see very good uh, immune uh, even with that. And we will have a new one pretty soon if it's needed. Uh, and finally, finally, doctor, uh, give, set our expectations going forward. Uh, should we expect a world in which we need to get shots and boosters maybe annually? And will there be sort of a long line of variants here in new versions of vaccines, for that matter, that you'll be b- basing on this mRNA platform? David, I-, I had made months ago the prediction that likely we will need a booster at six months. I was saying six to eight months, and then I think that was proven to be accurate. And then I said that likely we will need annual revaccinations. And that we will need annual revaccinations for quite a bit of time, because I thought that the virus will not just go away, will stay around. Right now, I'm way more confident that these are the right predictions. With everything I have seen, I truly believe that the variant uh, the, the virus will stay globally around for years. And also, I believe that uh, with annual revaccinations, either with the same or with tailor made vaccines, we should be able to have very high level of protection. And that add the ability that we didn't have before of a treatment that is so effective. Keep in mind, instead of 10 people going to hospital when they get infected, only one will go. That is a game changer. So I think we have right now all the tools in our toolbox to have optimism that we will win this battle. 